Good day, and welcome to the Radiation Safety and Computer Tomography Virtual Symposium. My name is Tony Seibert, a faculty member of the University of California Davis Medical Center Department of Radiology. I'm also a co-investigator of the University of California Dose Optimization and Standardization Endeavor, who is sponsoring this virtual event. It is my distinct honor and pleasure to present this talk on DICOM Basics for the Technologist. What is DICOM? DICOM is an acronym for Digital Imaging and Communications in Medicine, an international standard that describes pathways to effectively communicate and share information in a digital imaging environment. Some common questions regarding DICOM, many of which will be answered in this presentation, are the following. Where does DICOM come from? What does DICOM do? What do the terms mean? What parts of DICOM does a CT modality need to support or use? How does DICOM affect image quality and radiation dose reporting for CT? DICOM was initially spearheaded by the American College of Radiology and the National Electrical Manufacturers Association, NEMA, in 1983 and first published in 1985. Advanced standards were published in 1988 as ACR NEMA DICOM II. In 1993, as computers and computer networks became more powerful and useful, the DICOM-3 standard was published and has since then has been continuously changed and updated. Today it is still DICOM-3 or simply DICOM with many new and retired supplements. DICOM is a standard that addresses five main areas of functionality, namely transmission and persistence of complete objects such as images, patient waveform data, and radiation dose structured reports the query and retrieval of such objects, implementation of actions such as retrieving an object, management of modality work lists that provide the patient information to the technologist at the control console of the scanner. This reduces entry errors and speeds up patient throughput. DICOM also provides a means to ensure the quality and consistency of images as they appear on a display, which is often the weak link in the delivery of information to the radiologist. PACS, Picture Archiving and Communication System, is but one part of a larger informatics infrastructure in an institution, as shown in this simple diagram. Other systems include the Radiology Information System, RIS, the Electronic Medical Record, EMR, Speech Recognition Software, Primary Diagnostic Reading Workstations, Enterprise Display Workstations, and in some cases, a Radiation Dose Engine. Other standards used in the communication of information in an imaging department include HL7, Health Level 7, a standard used for communicating textual data between systems, and HTTP, the Hypertext Transfer Protocol, used for transmitting information over the Internet and the local area networks. I do not have enough time to completely describe the details of communication here. Suffice it to say that the DICOM standard is an integral part of the communication of image information and study details. More will be explained in another presentation entitled Incorporating Dose Monitoring Software into RIS and PACS in this virtual symposium. When working with DICOM, it is important to understand the acronyms and abbreviations. Listed here are some of the more frequently encountered terms. For example, an AE title, the application entity name, such as Cardiac CT, is given to a device which specifically identifies it within a network. Together with the unique IP, internet protocol address, and port number, the device is recognized and is able to communicate on the network using DICOM protocols. IOD, Information Object Descriptor, is another important DICOM component. DICOM objects are recipes of items that define instances of an entity, such as CT, MR, ultrasound, mammography, PET images, a modality work list, or a radiation dose structured report. Attributes of the object are defined in modules contained in the DICOM metadata associated with the objects. There are many modules contained in an IOD, such as patient module or study module. In the metadata, DICOM attributes have defined tags, value representations, VR, value length, and value field. Shown in this example is a portion of the patient identifier module and corresponding value representation and the contents of the value field. Notice how the data is explicitly encoded and separated with caret separators for the person name and explicit formatting for date and time. 
An important attribute, part of the, an attribute is the DICOM tag, shown as a group number, comma, element number pair, which uniquely identifies the attribute. Tags with an even group number are public, and tags with an odd group number are private, mostly for the proprietary use by the vendor. In addition, DICOM requires a type field identifying the attribute to be mandatory and filled in as indicated by a 1, mandatory and either filled in or left blank as indicated by a 2, or optional as indicated by a 3. Examples of pixel spacing attribute, image orientation, image position, slice thickness, and slice location are shown with descriptions in this example. DICOM metadata associated with a patient, exam, series, and image is encoded and attached to the study. Software can extract metadata and display contents as shown. Each DICOM tag is associated with a given attribute, description, and contents, such as tag 0008,0080, which gives the institution name, UC Davis Medical Center, tag 0018,0060, which gives the KVP used for the acquisition, and tag 0018-1210, which indicates that the lung reconstruction kernel filter was used, as indicated by the red boxes. A considerable amount of information is contained in the DICOM metadata about the patient, image acquisition details, and how to display the image among many attributes. For instance, recently introduced attributes to describe multi-detector row scanners and operation details are now found in tags 001893XX to indicate parameter settings such as detector width, collimator width, and pitch outlined in the red box above. Closer inspection shows the tags and their corresponding values in units. For instance, 0018,9311 that provides the pitch value. This information is often mapped on the image overlay, which is helpful to the radiologist when interpreting the study. How does one find out about the tags, attributes, and value representations? That is where the DICOM conformance statement comes in. A conformance statement is a lengthy document that explicitly describes the details of DICOM implementation by a manufacturer, where details of the implementation model, application entity specifications, communications protocols and profiles, DICOM tags, and other information are published. DICOM conformance statements detail the services and functionality provided by the modality vendor and the PACS vendor regarding implementation models. However, just because a conformance statement indicates a particular capability, many functions are optional and must be negotiated at extra cost. You must work with both the modality and PACS vendors to ensure and achieve desired functionality. Some very important capabilities and tools are provided by DICOM, including DICOM Grayscale Standard Display Function, describing the calibration of display devices to optimize human perception. Tools to, to de-identify DICOM studies necessary to protect patient, patient security and privacy according to the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, HIPAA. And DICOM Radiation Dose Structured Report, a way to report the details of the dose metrics on a CT scanner. The Grayscale Standard Display Function, GSDF, also known as DICOM Part 14, identifies a method for calibration of monitors using the concept of just noticeable differences and perceptual linearization. The model is based upon an equal change in input digital pixel value that results in an equally perceived change in output luminance. A researcher named Barton described this model. The Barton curve, shown here, represents the just noticeable differences as a function of display brightness of a grayscale liquid crystal display monitor. By measuring the response of the monitor to variations in digital pixel driving level, a translation table can be used to map the pixel values from the image by the video display card in the computer to overcome the non-ideal characteristics of the monitor response. GSDF calibration can be performed in several ways. One way is to use a photometer that senses the light output of the monitor as a function of digital driving level. The top left graph and white curve shows the measured response of the monitor, and the black curve shows the desired response. The post-calibration of the measured values are shown in the bottom graph and demonstrate a response that reproduces the Barton curve. 
The Society of Motion Picture and Television Engineers, SMPTE pattern, image, is a qualitative way to easily verify if the monitor is appropriately calibrated. In the pattern, there are several grayscale steps, resolution test patterns, and other characteristics that can provide insight into the quality and calibration of the monitor. Most LCD monitors have less than optimal calibrations in the darkest and brightest areas of the image. So one quick check is to verify the ability to perceive a 5% difference in luminance in the 0% box and a 5% difference in luminance in the 100% box as shown by the red circles in the post-calibration image compared to the pre-calibration image. Another test image, called the Briggs pattern, demonstrates the more informed impact of an uncalibrated monitor as shown in the left image, particularly for displaying subtle differences in grayscale in the darker areas of the image and the image shown with the same calibrated monitor on the right. Monitor calibration is a key aspect of the imaging system as the image is only as good as its weakest link, which is often the monitor itself. DICOM does provide capabilities to ensure image quality. DICOM acquired metadata is full of patient protected information, also known as PHI, that must be removed when sharing data for research studies, participating in a registry, or a host of other activities. To ensure compliance with the federal rules as specified by the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, HIPAA, the capability to fully remove PHI from studies must be available. In some situations, this can be done during export of a study from the PACS or by third-party software. An example of an anonymized study is illustrated by an enlarged view of the overlay content on the CT scan study. What content must be changed? This is described under the rules of HIPAA, listing 19 separate fields that are often contained within the DICOM metadata, including patient name, accession number, medical record number, date of birth, among others as listed. This is a non-trivial exercise, as often there is PHI that is not readily accessible by standard tools. Another very important aspect of DICOM, particularly pertinent to this virtual symposium, is the dose reporting capabilities that are part of the DICOM standard. For CT, the dose metrics, computed tomography dose index, CTDI vol, and dose length product, DLP, are required to be reported in the interpretive diagnostic report of the patient in the state of California. Until recently, the typical method of getting dose information was by creating an image of the dose report and placing it with the CT scanner generated images. The example is shown on the left. The radiation dose structured report shown on the right provides more complete and formatted information about the dose metrics and relevant acquisition parameters. The RDSR is a relatively new module and the unique identifier descriptor is not always acknowledged in a PAX nor is it translatable in a universal way, at least currently. Things do change, however. The dose report image is a secondary capture object which requires optical character recognition software to automate the extraction of dose information into a character format. Often protected health information is burned into the dose report image, making it very difficult to anonymize the study. The dose report shown here is de-identified by using masking software to eliminate the patient identifiable values such as patient name, accession number, and patient ID or medical record number. Shown in this example is the radiation dose structure report by a manufacturer. Listed are each of the radiation events, including the localizers and the actually scanned image with pertinent details such as region scanned, type of acquisition, spiral helical in this example for the third acquisition event, acquisition parameters with CTDI vol, DLP, and the phantom used for CTDI calibration. The RDSR simplifies the efforts of accurate and complete dose information extraction in CT. So, in summary, I hope you now have a better understanding of what the DICOM standard is and what value added provides as an integral part of medical imaging devices and electronic imaging and medical record systems. Certainly, a basic understanding of DICOM is important to the technologist and other users of PACs and imaging systems to troubleshoot image problems, provide for improved workflow and image quality, to have a means to protect patient health information, extract radiation dose metrics, and overall do a better job of patient care. Thank you very much for your attention.